one of the things I know with women and one of the, my side gigs is I run a program called Women in Leadership. And one of the things we always talk about is how women have in many, well, any, any low power group, it could be female, it could be other, um, you know, underrepresented groups, um, but they have a low, lower latitude of power that they get to exercise. And so I, I tell a story about a joke that my very senior, very esteemed and accomplished um, dissertation advisor would tell. And he used to tell this joke about the invention of business class, you know, and how great it was and how it was profitable for the airlines. And he'd wrap up by saying, and I've tried many times with gusto to make up the difference in price in free drinks, right? And everybody would laugh and that would be great. And if I told that joke that way, I mean, you'd be horrified. You'd be like, oh my God, is she okay? Like, <laughs> so, so I had to modify the joke, right? And it was, uh, so the way I tell it is, uh, oh, and I have, I'm, I'm here to tell you, my husband has tried many times to make up the difference in free drinks and it's not a pretty sight. And everybody's like, great, no problem, right? But I think that is interesting. Um, and uh, just, just how that kind of works. So our listeners are hungry for an example of how humor had that effect for you, Naomi? Sure. Absolutely. So I was, one example that comes to mind is uh, relatively early in my career. So I was mid twenties and I was um, taking this stretch role. So I was facilitating a group dynamic session for a board and the most senior person in the room, a man named Craig was um, he was really sort of status um, demonstrating a lot. So his hands were behind his head. He was leaned back in his chair and um and I noticed that he was pretty disengaged and and the comments he made were a little bit flippant. So I'm standing at the front of the room, everyone else is sitting, I'm giving my presentation. And about halfway through, when I'm talking about um, using, basically how do you use empathy to read people's emotions and therefore connect with them more powerfully, he interrupts me and he says, can you cut to the part where you just get my people, you get my people to do what I want without me having to tell them all the time. And it was this moment, like the oxygen left the room, right? And here I am standing at the front of the room. Everyone swivels their head to him, swivels their head back to me. And without thinking, I'd been doing improv in, you know, in the nights. And without thinking, I just shot back at him. Craig, that's a great question. You're thinking about the session I run on mind control. And come back next week and I'll teach you all about that. And it was a, I mean, at the moment, it was a bold move by me. As soon as I said it, I thought, oh my gosh, I've just totally, you know, I've ruined my career talking back to this guy. And instead what happened was there was this moment of pause and then the room erupted in laughter and Craig himself erupted in laughter. And I'm going to use, this is the best story to use because of what he said. So everyone laughs and he looks at me and he goes, I respect you. You can continue. <laughs> Word for word. I wrote it down in my notebook later. I was like, oh my gosh, this can be a tool for me. And, you know, and I, and I detail in the book, this actually became a really important moment for me. He reached out to my CEO. He told my CEO about how powerful my session had been. And he became a, an advocate for me after that. That's, that's a great story. That's a yeah. great story. But it is funny how sometimes those moments, um, like, like they sort of slip out of you before you knew what to expect almost, <laughs> which totally. is interesting. Oh yeah. So um, you've had um, the the in the book you talk about four humor styles, which I think is interesting because I think when you tell people try to be a little more human, try to be more empathetic, you know, and you get these people like I'll, one CEO I knew was what we would call a reflector. Like he he and he had unfortunately he had these like huge round glasses. And when he went go into a, like a reflection mode, he was like the Cheshire cat, like he completely disappeared behind these glasses. And one of his heads of strategy was designing this offsite retreat. And I was doing some work with them at the time. And she said, I know what we'll do. We'll have a room full of young people and they'll rapid fire pepper him with questions. And it'll be this really engaging give and take. And I was like, no, 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 we're, no, we're not going there. Don't do it. I had strong, like, like, don't do it. Just don't. Like, what you want to do is get a stack of index cards, write the questions out in advance, give, it, give them to him 48 hours ahead, let him cogitate on them, and then you can have a great session. Well, did she listen to me? Of course not. <laughs> no, so, no. so we're in this session, and, like, the first question gets asked, and you can probably relate to this, right? The guy disappears like metaphorically just disappears behind us. Again, he thoughtfully thinks about the question, then gives his measured response, by which time all the people who are more kind of activist in the room, you, you know, are, are desperately looking for the exits. I mean, it was bad. <laughs> anyway, talk about the four styles. That would be fun. 
Absolutely. So one of them is stand up, which you kind of did a little bit right there. That tends to be more extroverted, you know, sort of easy to laugh. They're natural entertainers. They're not always um, afraid to ruffle a few feathers. Um, the second type, which you also are, is magnet. And they they are actually, they keep things positive, warm, and uplifting. They avoid controversial or upsetting humor while radiating charisma. And then there's the sniper. The snipers are edgy and sarcastic and nuanced, and they're unafraid to cross a line to get a laugh. And then there's sweethearts, and they tend to be more earnest and honest. And their, their humor often flies under the radar because they often like read the room and know, you know what are the risks associated with humor. So we never use humor you know, basically to, you know, um, if there was a risk associated with it. So what we find is that people have like a primary and a secondary style. Mm -hmm. And we also find that it tends to be pretty different at work um, versus at home, or, you know, some, some of these styles differ with very close friends versus colleagues.